Hi, I'm John. This is my show, An American Scheme, where I am proving that Diana Ross is Michael Jackson's actual mother. So, <laughs> last night I went down another rabbit hole with uh, James, the person who helps me with the story and stuff. You know, he's the only person that I really have, like, real conversations with, and we really talk about the story, and it's constantly developing, too. And so, last night... <sighs> This is another one of those things. It's like, okay, now this rabbit hole, it's one of those things I'm, I'm just going to, it's, it's, I was really intimidated and there's like, this opened up so many doors that it was like, oh my God, it was overwhelming and stuff, right? It was, it was, I'm intimidated with this one and stuff. It really opened up all this stuff and it's just like, wow. Oh, like it, and so this is the kind of stuff that's like the that James and I, we have this stuff and it's like just all of a sudden we're going down these rabbit holes with it opens up all this information it's just crazy right and this is like kind of stuff that nobody knows that see like what i'm going to show you right here is is i'm intimidated and i want to further this but what happens is like there's so much information and i get intimidated and i kind of just put it to the side a lot of times and then i don't make this starting video. So what I've learned is that I just need to make this starting video and just throw some basic information down, right? And then later I can use it to come back and redevelop and uh, I can develop other videos and stuff like that. It's just tricky and stuff because there's just so much information and stuff. So right, so right now I'm just going to get some basic information out. So what happened is I was looking at the uh, Dangerous album cover because there's just so much here, right? It's just so much going on. And uh, there were certain things I was looking for. I was looking at one thing that got me to look at this and stuff. And then, but then when I looked at it, I was I was looking at it and I'm like, is this a family photo? Is this like, uh, I'm like, is the dog representing the king? Is that representing Smokey? And the queen bird be, would be the representation of Diana and Michael would be like the royal child, right? And so I was looking at this and I'm like, is this some kind of like family photo with Michael, Diana and Smokey? Is that what this is like representing and stuff, right? And then so I, I sent it to James and um, I'm trying to think of, the, he asked me something, but then somewhere I was saying that the, uh, the bird there, I was saying that the bird to me, I thought it was a, a hummingbird, right? I thought it was a hummingbird because these two other little birds down there, Okay, so those two little birds, at first, when I first thought them, I kind of thought they looked like hummingbirds because they're like in a steel position, and that's kind of how the hummingbirds are. But, you know, so then I kind of thought, I thought that this was a hummingbird, right? I thought that was a hummingbird. And then I thought it made sense with Diana, like being like a hummingbird, I thought was a good symbolization for Diana, was like a hummingbird. But then, so then, you know, so, so that's what I was saying. So something came up with that. And I was looking at this and I was, I sent it to James and I asked him about like the family photo. And then somehow I called Diana the hummingbird, right? And then, then James comes, this is the kind of stuff that James does that is just like, <laughs> he finds this stuff is really wild, right? So he comes up and he says, look at this I found. And it's like one of these things I don't even know exactly, I don't even know how he finds this shit, right? <laughs> Sometimes, so he says, look at I found this like poem thing, but it's called, the, it's called the dog and the sparrow, okay? It's called the dog and the sparrow. And then we get over to here, it's authored a collection by the Brothers Grimm. Now just really quick, like, now when I saw the Brothers Grimm, in my head I'm like, I've heard that name, I don't know what it is, okay, but so it's one of those things. I know I've heard that name, but I don't know who they are. In my head, I'm, I don't instantly associate it with who they end up being, right? But in my head I'm thinking, I've heard that Brothers Grimm somewhere, I don't know, I know I've heard that name. So that's one of the things I'm like to the people out here watching the video. Like when I first point that out to you, do you instantly uh, know the Brothers Grimm? Right? It's one of those things. Do you people instantly know that? So I wanted to show you that. So now, let me read. So then it comes up. So this is this, uh, the basic synopsis of the, uh, of the story of the uh, dog and the spur. I'm going to go ahead and read this to you and stuff. Take a couple minutes. Okay, so it says, A dog owner lets his shepherd dog starve from hunger 
causing it to leave home. The dog meets a sparrow and accompanies, accompanies it to the city. The bird captures meat and bread for the dog as its sign of gratitude. When they leave town, night falls and they decide to go to sleep. During the night, a man in a horse carriage approaches the dog and the sparrow. The sparrow alerts the man that he is going to run over the dog who is in the road, but, but he ignores the sparrow and runs over the dog nevertheless. The sparrow, the sparrow curses the man, announcing that he will turn into a poor man. It pecks the wine barrels the man was transporting open so that the precious wine leaks out. The bird also pecks out the horse's eyes. When the man tries to kill the bird with an axe, he accidentally slays his own horse. <laughs> Funny story. As a result, the man is forced to leave his now useless carriage behind and returns home. At home, he notices the birds have eaten all his wheat, and he notices the sparrow still out on revenge <laughs> and throws his axe at him, only to smash his own windows, <laughs> his stove, and the rest of his household. <laughs> That's a, a funny story. Finally, he manages to capture the bird, and his wife asks him whether he's going to strike it dead. The man feels... This death is not cruel enough for the bird. <laughs> it's just wild. He swallows it in one big bite. However, the bird still sticks its head out of the man's mouth, prompting him to let his wife take a final swing with his axe at the bird. This kills the man and the bird flies off. <laughs> what a crazy story, right? What a crazy story. So <laughs> that's the synopsis of the, the dog and the sparrow story, right? <laughs> wild story. Okay, so now when you're first looking at this and stuff, it's like, well, why would this link up to Michael Jackson's Dangerous album? Okay, so it's like, well, why does it, how does this link up to Dangerous, right? And it's like, so then you go to here, the authors, the people that wrote, that created that story, the Brothers Grimm, okay? So here's the Brothers Grimm, and let me just read off the top here what it says here with the Brothers Grimm. The Brothers Grimm, and it says like when they were born and died, so they died around 1850, around so you know their late 1700s to the 1850s is when they lived. So this is old, this is old story, this is old stuff, right? It says they were German academics, um, philo, philologist, philologist. Philologist? <laughs> Philologist? I'm not even sure what that name, word is. Cultural researchers, Lex, Lexi, 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 Graffers, Lexi Graffers, <laughs> and authors who together collected and published folklore. The brothers are among the best known storytellers of folk tales, popularizing such stories as Cinderella, The Frog Prince, Hansel and Gretel, Little Red Riding Hood, uh, Rapunzel, uh, Rapunzel, Rumpelstiltskin, Sleeping Beauty, and Snow White. And, uh, and there's even more, like the Pipe Piper, you go down, there's like the Pipe Piper. Okay, but see, like, this is a bunch of, like, Disney stuff, right? Super, super famous characters have its origin from the Brothers Grimm, you know? <laughs> Little Red Riding Hood, you know, the Snow White. Right? So it's like, man, this is a, it was like, whoa, the Brothers Grimm. So instantly when it's like, okay, well, this is who the Brothers Grimm are. And they have this connection to Disney on a, on a big, so instantly I'm like, oh, well, the Brothers Grimm are a big deal. These are people that are probably very well known, especially if you're in the Disney, like collectibles community, or if you study Disney, you should really know who the Brothers Grimm are, right? If, especially if you know anything about Disney literature and history and culture, you should know the Brothers Grimm. And Michael Jackson is all into that kind of stuff, right? So one of the things, like it said there, was uh, it says Sleeping Beauty and Snow White, okay? So it points out that those two are part of the Brothers Grimm, right? So here's Michael Jackson at um, the Havenhurst house. And there he is. There's Michael Jackson with Snow White and all the seven dwarfs, right? And this is at Havenhurst. This is Michael doing some, some thing there at Havenhurst with all this Mike with the Snow White and all the seven dwarves and stuff, right? So there's Michael with Snow White. So he's showing you the importance 
and there's like, oh yeah, so there's a, there's one of Michael Jackson's, um, that's one of Michael Jackson's pieces of artwork, right? There's no white in the seven dwarves. So it's like, okay, so Michael is very aware of the Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, and he's all into all the Disney stuff, and it's like, so I think it's pretty safe to assume that Michael Jackson would have been very aware of the Brothers Grimm, and they're the ones who created that story of the dog and the sparrow, and then when you look at the Dangerous album, it's a dog and a sparrow is what it looks like, is, is who those characters are, right? And so also on this, the Snow White, also, there's Diana Ross as Snow White, Okay, see how these things connect? I'm saying when you go down these rabbit holes and it's like all of a sudden you start being like, next thing you know, you got Diana Ross playing Snow White. <laughs> and then you got Michael Jackson hosting Snow White and all the seven dwarfs at the Havenhurst house having a big party. And, and you see it in his artwork. So it shows like, that's what I'm saying, these connections of this rabbit holes, it shows this is real connective. This is kind of stuff that Michael was very interested in and stuff, right? So then the other thing is, okay, this is a sparrow. Okay, so that's the bird, a sparrow. Okay, so now if we look back at the Dangerous album and we focus in on that bird. Okay, so that bird, now look at that bird. And then when I click over to the sparrow, I do think they look a lot alike. I think they look a lot alike. That that sparrow definitely could be that bird that bird might be a sparrow okay it, it could be a sparrow and then the other thing is that diana ross's book so diana ross's book secrets of a sparrow <sighs> okay that's what i'm saying so when you see this is that what this is? Is it Michael and Diana is represented as the sparrow and Smokey is the dog? Now we'd have to look more about, about like, why does he use the golden retrievers? Cause golden retrievers is just the nicest dogs. They're so nice. It's like, is that why he used the golden retriever? So that's what I'm saying. I'd have to go further into this rabbit hole. There's more stuff, but it's one thing here that I just thought was interesting was that this king has a glove, one glove. One shiny glitter glove. See, on his other hand, doesn't have a glove. He's got one glove representing that he's the father of Michael Jackson. The one glove. You know? That that's the origins. The king. The father of it. There's some connection to there. And that's what I'm saying is that this is representing Smokey Robinson. You know? And I don't know if it... So I have to go into it more and see, like, why is it that dog? And why is it a dog? Because there's things about dogs because I've heard Michael say that he doesn't like dogs, too. You know? So... And it's like, and why are you dogging me around? Like, in, in the songs. You know? Like, leaving me around. Just stop dogging me around. There's like all this stuff that's like, okay, well, that's what I'm saying. I have to go into it more. And so I'd have to study more. But it's like right now, I'm just trying to lay down a few of the basics. I'm not showing you the whole complete investigation because that's what happens with these rabbit holes. They go deep. And like I said, you guys don't know, you guys are not aware of the conversations that James and I are having. And we're, we're looking at this stuff and we're trying to analyze it. And it's like, and there's always all, there's always more. There's more, more. Look at, look, look at the picture. There's obviously more there, right? There's obviously, so that's what happens when you go down these rabbit holes. It starts going crazy. And, and like what I'm realizing with this is one of the things like with magic and this like childlike nature of, of and it's like, it's like opening a gift on Christmas, okay? So when you go down, when you look into this stuff and you start seeing the truth of what Michael Jackson has left behind, it's like he left behind gifts for us. And we get to open the gifts and we get to feel that joy of that innocence and that purity of being like a child at Christmas time. And you open your gift and you get to feel that, right? And that's what Michael has left behind for us with this kind of symbolism and these rabbit holes to, to go down and stuff. It's, but when you find them, there's like these gifts that he's left behind and you constantly get to open them and you get to feel that joy and that innocence-ness of being like a child at Christmas time, opening your gifts and stuff, right? And that's what I'm thinking is what he is doing here and what he's been doing and what he had left behind. This, this, this amazing stuff of what he's left behind and stuff, right? 
but within it, there's just always this sad story of the true nature of him being an abandoned child and stuff and what's actually going on. And the other thing is just like so much in, in the stuff does Michael Jackson highlights his eyes with that Sampaku eyes. It's such a big deal. The Sampaku eye thing is massive. Michael Jackson highlights it constantly. It's constantly being highlighted. Like, look at, he's like, what's the one, um, the one image? That out of all of this stuff, Michael only wanted you to focus on one image of his personal body. One image that he wanted to highlight more than anything. What does he want you to focus on? His eyes. Because it's the Sampaku eyes, the gateway to the soul, the connection to his mother who has that same characteristic trait to show the family lineage and stuff. And that's in the eyes and stuff. That Sampaku eye stuff, right? So like I said, there's just so much stuff here. It is, it's just really wild and stuff, right? And it, like, there's even stuff like the little hair strand. It, to me, it almost resembles like the double helix of the DNA. And it's like, and see how the double helix, the DNA comes down to the eyes. And it's like, this is like the symbolism stuff. When you start going into the rabbit hole and you start looking at stuff, it's like, is that him saying that his DNA is linked to his eyes, his true DNA? And is, is that why the hair how look kind of looks like that? It's like, am I looking too far or is that just there? You know, this is the kind of stuff when you go down these rabbit holes, it's like, I'm telling you, there is crazy. This stuff gets really, 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 really crazy and stuff, right? I wonder, I've looked on this, there's pictures on the eyes on another one. Let me just see if it's in here. And I, I don't think I could. Okay, but when you zoom in on the eye there, um, it's on the, on the history, on the history video. I've, I've zoomed in on the eye and there's this weird demon. The eye there, it, it, it look, it's actually like hair and the one piece of the, uh, right above the eye where the coloring is like off and the, under the eyebrow, it's actually a face. There's this really weird demonic face there. There's all kinds of stuff in this stuff when you, you know, on the other pictures I see, but anyways and stuff. Just, just letting you know, it's like, this is the kind of stuff, these rabbit holes that we go down, the information that's still out there and it's still available and these doors that still need to be opened and walked through so you can find it, this, you know, this crazy madhouse. That's what it is. It's, that's what this is. It's a madhouse, isn't it? Now that I look at it, See, that's how things happen, too, because that's what it would look like. You would look at, if you go to a carnival and there's like a madhouse, it would look like that. And it would be like, you would go in, it's, that's what it is. It's like a madhouse, right? It's a madhouse. And it's the madhouse, is, and it's a madhouse because it's Michael and with his real parents, Diane and Smokey. I was like, this stuff gets wild. <laughs> it gets wild and shit, right? Okay, so I just wanted to throw that out there to just start laying down the foundation of this kind of uh, story and stuff. Just showing you some of the information and the stuff that we go on. That it... How many more videos could we make off of this? I can make another hundred videos. That's why I'm just kind of just throwing it out there, just trying to lay it down because I'm intimidated. This is intimidates me because I've done so much work and then I start going into this and I instantly am like, I can make another hundred videos off of this. It's, it's like crazy, right? So I just want to get down some basic information. I just try to lay down a basic foundation of something like this is a part of the investigation that has come up now and we're looking into it, but I can't always do everything. I don't have the time to do everything, but so I just got to get some of the information out there and stuff okay so i'll talk to you guys later bye